Hi, I'm Malcolm McKelvey. I'm the president of the Bobo Sustainability Network and I'm really pleased to be sharing our home with you on this Sustainable House Day video. This is the most comfortable home that we've ever lived in and I reckon the three main factors are orientation, insulation and air tightness. So there are other features, but let's go through those. So first of all, the house is basically a rectangle that goes uh, long axis east and west. North is facing true north and so we're getting winter sun coming in through these um, windows hitting a relatively dark um, coloured tiles on the concrete slab. We've got summer shading from grapevines on a pergola. Remembering that the sun is the, the, sun is the cheapest heater we've got so we're making um, the best use of it as we can. Now, insulation. So the ceiling insulation is spray foam. I'll show you a picture of that soon. And that's to a level of R4. We've got straw bale walls that are quite thick, as you can see, that's R12. And the concrete slabs on waffle pods with a, a layer of perimeter insulation. So the other, the weak spot in all houses is, is the windows. And in our case, we didn't skimp on windows, having made that mistake in a previous house. So we've got um, composite frames, so timber on the inside, aluminium on the outside. The, all, the, all the glazing is double glazed and they seal really well. I'll show you that too. This is a view of the ceiling insulation. It's spray foam under the roofing material. It's to a thickness of R4. And this happens to be in the storage cupboard where we've got the hot water tank. So you can see while we're here, I've insulated the hot water pipes and the pressure temperature relief valve with a valve cosy. One of the things we do as part of our home energy assessments is blower door testing. So this quantifies the level of air tightness and also it uh, is very helpful in finding the source of the leaks. I'll turn it on, it's quite noisy, so I'll just turn it on and um, show you. at a level that's quite good because if, you, if it's, the house is too tight you need some form of mechanical ventilation. If it's too leaky then it's very wasteful of energy. The, the heat you're trying to keep inside um, will just go out through the cracks while you're endlessly trying to heat it. Our only source of heat is this wood heater and you can see it's got a wet back and the insulated pipes leading up into the water tank that I showed you before. In this shot you can see our only form of cooling, we've got ceiling fans. They're also very helpful in winter to mix the warm air that pools up in the high ceilings. You can also see we've got an internal rammed earth wall, so that adds to thermal mass, which keeps the internal temperature nice and even, day and night, season to season, you know, within reason. We've got efficient electric appliances, so this fridge is quite efficient. We've got a chest freezer, that, a vest frost chest freezer that's very efficient and an induction cooktop which is just the best. If you haven't already used one, um, try it and you'll love it. This is our Zappi car charger. We've got a couple of electric cars and this smart charger can charge on regular, just fast, fast charge at seven and a half kilowatts anytime. There's an eco setting um, that will use the renewable energy that we're generating and if a cloud goes over then it'll top it up to 1.4 kilowatt and an eco plus mode that will means that you can charge only at um, from your renewable sources. And this is a look at our renewable energy setup where there's the grid inverter and we've also got a, an off-grid system that does most of the house except for the oven and cooktop and that electric car charging point. So we've got some secondhand lead acid batteries from Hazelwood. Other ways that we're trying to live sustainably include growing our own food. So I've got some um, seedlings coming up ready for spring planting and we've got an orchard and a reasonably sized uh, vegetable garden and a greenhouse under construction. This is the other part of the hot water system, the evacuated tubes. So in summer 100% of our hot water is provided by them and in winter it's boosted by the wet back on the fire that I showed earlier. 
So there's no gas or electricity needed at all. Our scorecard rating was 10 out of 10 for efficiency with a hot weather rating of 4 out of 5 and a cold weather rating of 4 out of 5. Well, so that's it. Thanks very much for watching the video and enjoy your own journey to a sustainable home.